TorahCafe.com. Please welcome the Consul for Media Affairs at the Consulate General of Israel in New York, Mr. Shimon Mercer Wood. As we have just heard, for Jews, food is a language. It is a language we use to speak to our families and loved ones. It's a language we use to talk about our past and to express our hopes for the future. It is a language we use to express our affliction and our joy. So I want to take this language and use it to talk to you for eight minutes about a certain country that I love very dearly. So here are five foods and what they say about Israel. The first one is Israeli wine. So you could argue that wine, it's not really a food, it's a drink. But the Gemara in Masechet Brachot teaches us Chamra tarte itbe. Sa'id u Wine has two aspects. It nourishes and gladdens. So we can treat wine as a food. But what does wine, Israeli wine, tell us about Israel? It tells us that Israel is the fulfillment of God's promise to his people. The prophet Amos in Perektet in chapter 9 says, I shall bring back the exiles of Israel, and they shall rebuild desolate cities and dwell in them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink their wine. So we are coming back to our land. We have rebuilt those desolate cities, and we are dwelling in them. And we have planted vineyards, and we are drinking their wine. But we're not just drinking any wine. In these past 10 to 15 years, the quality of Israeli wine has reached exquisite heights. And today we stand proudly in one line with the very best winemakers of the world. My previous posting was in New Delhi in India. And I remember once I offered a colleague from the French embassy some Israeli wine. And he tastes it and he says, no, 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 no. This is French wine that you've put in Israeli bottle. You're lying. <laughs> That's how good Israeli wine. But what does it mean? It means that the land of Israel and the state of Israel is a gift from God, and we must rejoice and take pleasure in that gift. Israel isn't just a struggle, it's not just an effort, it is something we should enjoy. This is what wine tells us about Israel. Number two, the poike. Now, poike, which has become very popular with young Israelis in these recent years, is kind of like a campfire cholent. You take this big cast, iron pot, you put it on the campfire and you start putting in meat and vegetables and juices and spices and what have you. Now, to be very frank, it's not quite haute cuisine. <laughs> in, in fact, it's quite awful from a culinary point of view. But why do Israelis like it? Why do Israelis love to go for a good poike? Because when you're making a poike, everyone has a say. You set it up, and then everyone sits around and says, let's put more of this, let's put less of that. It's been too long in the fire, it's not been long enough in the fire, we should stir it, we should let it simmer. Everyone gets to take part in a debate, in a lively conversation, in exchange of ideas. That's what Israel is about. So Poike tells us that Israel is a true democracy. Number three, Tiv'ol. Now, if you walk into any supermarket or even restaurant today, you'll find a huge array of seitan and tofurkey and toberki and all sorts of meat substitutes. It's all the rage. It's the big fashion. But in Israel, we've been doing this since the 80s. We were making meat substitutes before it became cool. Tivol was founded in 1980 in Kibbutz Lochamei up in the north. And what this teaches us about Israel is that Israel is the spirit of innovation. It's the creative energy. It's staying ahead of the curve. It's thinking today about what everyone else will be doing tomorrow. And this is the reason that Israel is a global technology hub. So Tivol tells us that Israel is the true startup nation. The response, Bamba. 
And this, I have to say, I owe this idea to our ambassador in London, Ambassador Danny Taub. Bamba, as we all know, as I can see from the response, is the staple of Israeli children. <laughs> this is what Israeli children are raised on. Now, you may have noticed that in Israel, the incidence of allergy to peanuts is a fraction of what it is in other Western countries. And scientists aren't really sure what's the reason, but a valid theory is that because Israeli children are exposed to peanuts at a young age, they develop the mechanisms to deal with it and to face it and to neutralize its negative effects. And this tells us something about how we raise our children. Because the Israeli attitude to raising children and to educating isn't to shelter and to protect and to hide the children away from those parts of life which might potentially be harmful. Rather, it's to expose them to it and to encourage them to develop their own mechanisms of dealing with it and their own mechanisms for neutralizing that in it which might be harmful. So Bamba tells us that Israel is about raising children to responsibility. Finally, the Israeli chili pepper. Now, first of all, these chili peppers you see are grown in the Arava desert, the most desolate and arid area of the country. They are grown in greenhouses using unique Israeli technologies. They are watered with drip irrigation, which is an Israeli invention. So, chili peppers from the Arava teach us that Israel is a global agricultural superpower. It truly is about making the desert bloom which is another one of God's promises to the people which came to us through the prophets. And again, when I served in India, I would go to the most remote, far-off, distant village and speak to the most primitive, basic peasant and say, I'm from Israel. And he would say, ah, Israel, drip irrigation. <laughs> this is what they know about Israel. And it's not just in India, it's all around the world. We are known as the nation that makes the desert bloom. But that's not the only thing. The chili pepper, like Israel, it can be a bit much at first. <laughs> it can be overwhelming. In fact, it's quite liable to make your pulse race. But once you've come to terms with it, once you're accustomed to it, the stimulation and the energy of that flavor is such that life seems impossibly dull without it. So the Israeli chili pepper teaches us that Israel is something that takes an effort. It requires of you to accommodate it. But when you do, it is well worth the effort. So I could stand here and talk for hours and for hours about different foods and different flavors. And in the same way, we can all in our lives go on and on talking about Israel and reading about Israel. We can talk about Israel around our Shabbos tables and on Facebook and with our friends. But just as talking to you about the flavors will never compare to tasting them, so talking about Israel and reading about Israel will never compare to coming and tasting it. So I'm going to leave us all with a blessing from Bilkat Amazon from Grace After Meals. We, we all, may we all live to eat from the fruits of Israel and to be nourished by her goodness.